welcome back to Champs Chats. I feel like we're, we're just going to be live constantly during these uh, world championships. Champs Chats, presented by Tracksmith. We're, a lot of us are decked out in Tracksmith. Jasmine's got the hat. Kyle's got the sweater. And I the hat. Out of it. And, and the hat. And the sweats. Oh, Don't look at the sweat, that. Guys. Got the sweats. Wow. So... <laughs> Champs, uh, I'm thrilled that we're partnering with Tracksmith for our coverage of the uh, World Championships. Kyle and I were we did this daily podcast last year during the Olympic trials. You may have heard about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I might have heard a little something <laughs> about Tracksmith. You know, I kind of work with them from time to time. So yeah. shout out to Tracksmith. So they're, I mean, they're, they're just great about athlete storytelling. And so they're behind our full coverage for the World Championships, whether that is uh, this podcast, our show that we're doing on the YouTube channel, David Melly's newsletter that's going out every single morning. Uh, so in addition to that, they've got their own newspaper that if you're here in Eugene, you can go pick up a copy uh, on our front stoop. Oh, and man, got we have a, so many copies on got our so front many copies. stoop. I think they're going to start to go as more people yeah. kind of get into town. and so They weren't there for the morning run this morning, but yeah. they will be for tomorrow. A lot more people at the morning run this morning yeah. than I expected. So... Uh, we're just going to keep bringing you guys all of the content, whether it's, you know, the, the, yeah, this show, the other show, all that stuff. So real quick, got to pay the bills. Tracksmith is, is an independent running brand fueled by a deep love of the sport. They celebrate the amateur spirit and seeks to inspire the personal pursuit of excellence. Their summer collection is built for training in hot conditions. I've been a big fan of the silky smooth twilight uh, tee and the shorts for quite some time now. And they just added some nice, fun summer colors. So, listen up, Sidious Mag podcast listeners and those of you watching right now on YouTube. There's a special offer only during the World Championships. 20% off when you use code WORLDS, W-O-R-L-D-S, at checkout. 20% off. That's if you are a first-time customer uh, for Tracksmith or if you're a long-time customer like us. So, Check them out today, tracksmith.com. And also, here, here's a little cheat code that's out there, too. If you are a first-time customer who spends $150 or more, you get a free Van Cortlandt singlet in navy blue if you go to tracksmith.com. I didn't know about this. Slash right. VC promo I to add a singlet. And when your total hits over $150, bucks, then it goes back down to zero. So it's a really cool thing. And then in addition to that, shop you guys around know about Dude, and I use know code world. So if you didn't know, if you go and look on their website, they've got these really nice gold chains. So if you want to be decked <laughs> out and spend over 150 bucks, <laughs> there we go. Chain. Is that what you yeah. end up getting with the gift card? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Also, All right. wait, can I just like toss in, like if you're running and you're still competing and you need a uniform, they got these awesome yellow uniforms. So you can check them out on my Instagram because I wore them. They're new. They're there fantastic. Not everyone's going to look as good as you, Jasmine. <laughs> That's very Buy true. it and wear it. They're fantastic. Fantastic. Super cute. One last thing. So One in addition last. to Trash our, plug. Yeah. So in addition right. to our content, they're also backing uh, Malcolm Gladwell's new hit podcast, Legacy of Speed, which tells the story of the 1968, uh, what was it, uh, San Jose State, I wanted to get it right, uh, track team that not only you know excelled on the track, but also led to that amazing protest at the 1968 Olympics with John Carlos and Tommy Smith. So you get the whole story behind that over the span of five or six episodes. They're actually doing uh, a live recording here in Eugene. Uh, so check that out. That's Legacy of Speed. You're listening to this podcast. You know, you're in the podcast player. So cue that up for after this. Get all of the track and field content on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your shows. So can we get into it? Thanks, Traxman, for all your support. Uh, all right. Let's get right into it. Day one of the World Championships. How, how are we feeling that like the this long-awaited Super Bowl of track and field is finally here? It felt like we were in a circus today. And I know that like track is always kind of like a circus, but something about all the extra people and you know when World Athletics shows up to put on a meet of this caliber, there is so much extra tape everywhere mm -hmm. yeah and the, the so stadium the, looked like alcatraz <laughs> <laughs> but like on a beautiful day like, <laughs> and you're visiting like it's not a jail anymore <laughs> Uh, in a way, it's just sort of like it, there's so much that's under control and sort of like when yeah. it's just run by USATF or Tracktown, like it's a little bit more free and liberating. But it's yes. like you got to remember, like the world is coming to this event. And so it's like that's 200,000 people flooding into Eugene that you kind of do have to have like some people keeping everything in order. And so that's kind of a little bit of the reason why things feel a little bit more, you know, tight. But it was cool because it's so well organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And it's like they can just move into any stadium and do this. Yeah. <laughs> so well organized. And the fans, like today, I wasn't expecting that many fans to be there for day one since there wasn't any, like, it wasn't a series of finals. There yeah. was only, what, one? One final, yeah, the four one, by four? four? On the track, yeah. On yeah, the yeah. track. Because the then we walks. had the race walk right. that was shout off out the track. To the race so walks. shout out to the race walks. Sorry, I was just talking about in the track. Yeah, yeah. But in the track, there was only one final today. But to see that many people. Yeah come in i, I think it's also, only gonna build yeah and it's a friday yes it's, but also it wasn't just any like final it was allison felix's last lap so mm, that yeah, also yeah. probably yeah. played a big part in why the home stretch was so packed today so the first morning uh of this uh first session so it was like uh a little bit more preliminary early rounds field events caitlin you were at the stadium before all of us so kind of give us a little bit of you know what the like, I mean, literally, the temp uh, temperature take of what it was like at Hayward, you know, when you walked into the stadium, you saw U.S. championships, but this time around, it was like there's people repping all different countries. It felt different. Yeah, it, it definitely felt so much different, but it was so much cooler, too. It was like you're walking into... It's the same arena, the same town, but it felt like you were walking into a completely different atmosphere. And I feel like it's something that everybody deserves a chance to experience. Like, you're literally walking around and... You hear a bunch of different accents. You see a bunch of different shirts, a bunch of different jerseys, coaches literally from everywhere. Or like you're talking to college coaches and they're like, yeah, I got one kid from this country, another kid from this country. And you're literally like, wow, you start to really realize that this is world championships and like stuff's about to get hot this week. It is. It is. So that's a, a, a concept I never really thought about. It's like as a college coach, yeah, you do have kind of, you're invested <laughs> in all these different countries. That's kind of actually pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it's cool seeing like the people that you've, watching the ncaa now all of a yeah. sudden having yes. new uniform on that's like not a u.s jersey like, yeah oh cool I, sometimes i forget that these college kids run for other countries and so it's so strange to be like oh wait you run for like team nigeria or canada yeah. you're you're not a, an american it's like, i wish and you were on cool. our team like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why are you Come not join over USA. here <laughs> all right so to kind of get into the first session we'll we'll eventually lead into allison's last lap but there was we we walked into the stadium and there was already the three thousand meter steeplechases on the track. Yeah, I mean, we we started out hot. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, first heat we see El Bacali, who the is Olympic arguably champ. the the not even arguably he's the favorite. You yeah. know, he didn't run under eight minutes three times this season like Germa did, but you know he he's the defending Olympic champ and. You know, that for me walking in was like, oh, we're at, we're at Worlds. <laughs> like, <Yeah. Bacall> <laughs> El Bacall was here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. yeah like, um, and, you know, looking good. Unfortunately, our man Bernard Keeter didn't make it out of the first mm. heat. But, you know, when the U.S. bias on this podcast will be very evident because yeah. <laughs> we were pumped to see Hillary Bohr come out and look fantastic like Got, yeah redemption for last year didn't make it to the final in tokyo so this time around he was all smiles he said honestly the mission for this was to make it to the final and so now it's like the pressure's kind of off because that's what he wanted to accomplish he's into the final now and so it's sort of you know i, I think he could surprise some people yeah you know he had won a diamond league mm -hmm. last year previous to tokyo and then wasn't able to make the final and i know that was extremely disappointing as you would think because he's not here just to like make the final like he wants a medal yeah. and when he is coming in jogging looking around with the likes of Lamecha Gurma and Kinsella's Kip Rudu, you're mm -hmm. like okay that's who you need to beat to get a medal <laughs> like those are the guys and so I asked him I was like do you feel the pulse of like you know you're looking around can you kind of feel what those guys are feeling like at that time and it's like yeah you know the difference between the guys who are going to medal and the guys who are just sneaking into the final in that prelim, different worlds. Mm -hmm. And I think he has now reached that fitness level in which he is like the prelim on a day like today. It's like that's a little bit of a formality. He's fit enough to make it that way. And we asked him, like, what happened? Like, you know, previous, why yeah. didn't you make And he just said he and his brother were overtraining. Yeah. <laughs> and they've cooled it off a little. And now on race day, they feel good. Yeah. A lesson for all the, yeah. the young athletes. What a out way there. to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. It's quality, not quantity, guys. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. So then a person who's very familiar to working his way through the rounds, and again, kind of talking about the home team here, 
Evan Jager looking great. I think in terms of just like, like physically, like his hair and the hair, his, the, the haircut and all that stuff. Super old. Has, <laughs> has he been in the gym? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't he's think been he's been ever there. left the gym. Yeah. <laughs> a different type of gym than maybe Michael Norman was yeah. in. <laughs> 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 he's in some sort of gym. So he he ends up finishing second behind uh, Ethiopians uh, Amare in the third and final heat, and so he ends up running eight eighteen, which is not that far off of what he just ran at USA's. And so I, I asked him sort of like what did you do between USA's and now to kind of get ready for this? And he said, honestly, only one workout. Uh, and it actually has, wasn't as intense or heavy as it has been in the past leading into a championship. And so um, he, you know, kind of, he's been uh, at a level like this before. It was very cool to hear him kind of, you know, explain how he sees the final work going from here. Because, yes, maybe Evan 2017 was in eight flat shape. And this time around, it's sort of like, how can he get back to that point? 2015, 16, that era of Evan. And it's it's not a guarantee that he's going to pull that off. So he thinks the final is going to be super fast. And it's going to be Gurma and El Bacali battling out in the front. He thinks that it's better for uh, Gurma to be the guy pushing it out from the front. It generally is. And so that benefits him. So... John Galt from Let's Run asked him, so like, where does that leave you? And he says, honestly, I prefer that because if that's happening, then I can run fairly free and and on my own. And, and you know, he could be the guy who picks off people along the way. He says he does have his eyes on Conceslus Capruto from Kenya, the Olympic champion from 2016, who very similarly to Evan is had his ups and downs, well, more off the track for sure for Capruto. Uh, but now they're both sort of at this very similar crossroads of like, oh, like w- we have a chance. We're back at this level. And so it's kind of good to see not it's not an old guard because these guys were in contention three, four years ago. Uh, but they're also mixing it up with the best guys right now. And so I'm particularly excited for how uh, the steeplechase final is going to pan out. I think coming into USA's, he probably had some level of doubt about his fitness. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he had some good workouts or whatnot. And then you come there and you just have that emotional experience and it flips the switch in which you feel like yourself for a moment. And yep. for the first time in, you know, four years, five years, you have that excitement about running and racing again. And I just saw him hurtling today, looking smooth and, and confident, up in the front, yeah. taking the pace. And so it seems like what happened at USA is was, you know, physically he was probably there before, but now mentally he's where he needs to be. Yeah. So a locked in Evan I don't know. Like, I, it, it, there's really no need to be like Evan is gonna medal or anything like that. Because like no, at this knows, point, everything has been special to to kind of see unfold. This is this is a good season, and if anything, like it's a stepping stone to get back, you know, possibly to next year. And so, another thing, quick thing, uh, for the people wondering, it's sort of like, oh, I mean, did Evan talk about Coach Jerry Schumacher? taking the job at the University of Oregon, and now the Bowerman Track Club is, you know, you know, there's talks that they're going to be moving to Eugene um, later this year. He said he's going to talk about it after the finals. So uh, it, there were questions raised, and he said he's going to address it all after the final. And that's, you know, just him kind of, yeah. he's focused on the championship. Well, something that I do just want to give appreciation to, and this is, it's not like a slight at any athlete who's any other way, because, like, talking to athletes after prelim is interesting. Like, the job's not done yet, yeah. and you're going to go cool down. But Evan gives the the press all the time that he has yeah. after a race, and it's just I, – I, I really, he's an open book. He's happy to talk. He's super candid and honest about everything. And so for a guy like him who's willing to like hang out in the press section <laughs> for like a half hour after races asking – answering every last question that anyone might have – I respect yeah. it. You got to respect the distance. He's focusing. We'll talk a little bit more about Fernando Omanyala uh, yeah, later, yeah, yeah. but he was another one of those guys <laughs> yeah. uh, today who like literally told everyone his his life story of how he got to the United States. Um, 
because of the visa issues. But all right, so aside from that, we had some qualifying rounds. Women shot put. Chase Ely looked fantastic. One throw and she was done. Very similarly on the men's Super side, guys. Joe Kovacs won throw and he was done. Was Krauser? I would think the very first one. one. Very first one. one. one he walked past like in the stands and I'm like, wait, did he only just like throw one throw and walk off? Throws yeah. one. I look over and his sweats are already on. Shoes were off. Yeah, he was and going. It, he was going to do whatever yeah i mean that's and it's just all business and those are the people who are you know favorites for a medal and so it's just really funny that they have to go through it you know we had more rescreen on our show earlier and he's like i had to run four rounds and like that's you know exerting a little bit of energy and for some of these people it's like sort of like if they've medaled before just give them a bye to to, to the final at, at the next world championships but um chase ely looked good yeah well you know before we dive into this even further yeah. i do want to explain the qualifying okay. for yeah, those yeah. at home so in the field events at Worlds, it's not just a matter of taking the top 12, which is, you know, one way of getting into the final. There's also a qualifying mark. And so, for, like, example, in the women's steeple, it's 18.9. And if you throw over 18.9, then you're in the final. And so Chase <laughs> was saying, basically, she did a couple of warm-up throws, finished just underneath the 18.9. I think she said she threw one over, and then... Was basically able to like you see what you have to throw and just target it and yeah. she's someone who's who's thrown you know a couple meters beyond that yeah. pretty regularly yeah. so for eighteen nine you're not throwing a hundred percent so she just <laughs> is like oh I need to throw it right there <laughs> she just throws an eighteen nine six goes. and yeah. it's just like all right I'm gonna go cool down did exactly what needed to be done and I think that's always it's remarkable and fun for athletes to do that and also want to give a shout out to Jessica Woodard because mm, she made yeah. it onto the next survive and advance is the name of this game and. Um, kind of leading into the men. I think we had three, three of the Maggie four men Yoon also made making it, it and in. Emily and so, just, just outside, unfortunately. Just absolutely amazing. I'm like, oh, U.S. is out here really throwing. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Another qualifying round that took place: men's long jump. Marquise Dendy is Man. Marquise back. Marquise Dindy is indeed back. I don't think he ever really left. He just needed oh, he to get... He left a couple times. <laughs> he, <laughs> injuries. He came back. He had like injuries. three major yeah. surgeries. That's what I mean, though. He never truly left because every time he's came yeah. back from that injury, he's right back on the ball game, and that does not happen for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, I, again, another remarkable athlete that shows he's always going to count on himself and bet on himself. Well, so I had a, a chance to speak to Marquise after, and because the two of you share something, you guys were both members. Of yeah, what, what we, team? we were making like the NACAC team a decade ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Caitlin's so, like, Kyle competed at NACAC. I took my okay. mask down. I was like, remember me? You guys me? are gonna make it. You gotta stop making me seem like I'm ages and like I'm telling you guys that you're like sixty something years old. Okay. <laughs> She is very ageist. I'm guys. not. <laughs> but so I, I spoke to him after about a few different things. One, you know, he he jumped 816, which is a really solid jump for him. And on his second jump, he was, basically he jumped far enough that he was going to make it in. And But he was saying, like, I was feeling it today and I was feeling good. And he, you know, at USA's, he didn't jump as well as he wanted to. I think he said he finished 10th at USA's. Yep. Mm -hmm. And now today he comes in and he, he's jumping well and he's feeling good. So he decided to take that third jump beyond what he needed in terms of qualifying because when, you know, you've got an opportunity to gain some confidence and it, it you know, he extended quite a bit on that yes. third jump in the series. But I, I, you know, I asked him, I was like, you've been the hell and back. And he's like, and I don't think everyone realizes what he's gone through. The one thing I, then said was like, what's the difference between you now? Like, what's your advantage now at 29 that maybe you didn't have when you were, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old? And he said, he sleeps now. Yeah. He said he <laughs> yes. used to sleep like maybe six hours. And he's what? like, now I'm getting like strict 10. 10. I just See, I had the opportunity I, to talk to him about it in Tucson because somehow mystically we started talking about how we are getting older in the sport. <laughs> okay. And um, we, we kind of came to that conclusion. Like we talked about earlier, sometimes less is more. And mm -hmm. so he started to figure out like, you know, I need to change this within my training and I kind of got to back off and make sure that all of these practices are actually counting. But can we also talk about Stefan? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Another qualifier for the final. This is another qualifier for the final. He is a Texas alum. Okay. Um, shout out to Coach Flo. And Flo knows. Stefan McCarter, just so. Stefan McCarter, this man, opened up at USA's, made it onto the team, 
actually making it coming in the top three. And this is a second competition. Wow. Wow. Second comp. It's a Rust advancing. Buster at Worlds. <laughs> <Like>, Rust <laughs> Buster. <laughs> How scary is that? So, so for someone like him, how different will he be in the final than he was today? I, you know, because it is that rust buster, uh, as they were walking up, I kind of told him, like, hey, you're giving me a heart attack out here. Like, cut it out. <laughs> um, and he's like, I know it wasn't the best. It's not consistent. I think going into these next few rounds, it's just going to be really dialing in on getting consistent and just focusing in. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he'll be perfectly fine. And he's shown that he's perfectly capable. Like, I don't know too many people that can open up their first meet at a world qualifying championship and Very make it top three. Very select few. Now, Caitlin, can you describe for us, you know, you got the chance to sit near the Team USA section. Mm -hmm. What is it like when someone like Marquise pops off a really good jump? Is this something that from your seats, like you're able to see up close? Is the clap going? How's How are the vibes? So... I would definitely say the vibes could be better, but I think it's the, <laughs> that's I honest. Think, <laughs> I think as the days go forward, we'll definitely see more of that as the finals come through. But mm -hmm. there was definitely people participating in the clapping, um, which was fun to see. I was definitely participating in the clapping and the dancing. Apparently, um, was it your dance cam or something? Like on the no, there was no dance cam, no but dance me cam. and Jasmine were having a blast while everyone was staring at us like we had three heads on our shoulders. Oh, you guys thought there was a dance cam? <laughs> no, you we just wanted to dance. On and we can't. <laughs> Not dance when you play All music. Right. Whoever was on Ox um, today, keep doing it. Uh, You're doing great, hun. <laughs> yeah. But overall, the vibes um, in the section, like I said, could definitely be better. But it's there. I, I got faith. I got you got faith? faith? Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to get a vibes check from, from Caitlin every yeah, single day vibes. of world. <laughs> so um, just overall, uh, the leader in the long jump today was Yuki Hashioka. He was sixth at the Olympics last year. But, you know, no one showed their cards it seemed like everyone just did what they had to do. We, we, can we deduct anything from this? That's the tricky thing about um, long jump. I think most of the times, once you hit that qualifier, I think Marquise was probably one of the few that decided to keep going because he was feeling well, which he took advantage of that. But most of the time, you just want to get out there and hit that auto, qualif that auto qualifier and relax rest and say you know what i advanced to the next round so i think a lot of it's veteran moves of hey let's just try to get these marks in and get out of here the olympic champ matildas just yeah. right in the middle did nothing special didn't, didn't let us know anything don't yeah. have to do too much it's, getting into the finals isn't too crazy with the jumps it's sort of like you know we love 10 days of this much you know, high quality action, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's sort of like to the point. Like, <laughs> should, there's, there's some of this that you could, <laughs> you could, you could condense it to five or six days. But like, when it's ten days and you stretch these things out, like, there's going to be those days where it's sort of like, oh, like we really didn't learn all that much from like some of the top people. Yeah. But um, that only leads to like bigger surprises and like more of a, a show when the big time uh, when the big times uh, start to. Well, come out. yeah, you know, some of it is a little bit of a formality with, yeah. with this many rounds, this many people like. You have to narrow down, and the 1500 was a great example of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm a 1500 runner, or I was a 1500 Did runner. Do you know that, Caitlin? Back in the day, Caitlin, <laughs> <laughs> I ran, and the 1500 prelims were kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good for Team USA. Like, we got all three women. through, no problem. All three women, yep. So Corey, Ellie, and Sinclair all looked great, got through. Um, no, all the favorites still in it. All the favorites. No shocks. And it's, I think I was talking to Corey about it after. It's like that first round, you know, if you run solid, you'll make it through. But that second round turns up real quick. Yeah. But uh, although, like, that is not to discount, like, how fast some of these heats were. Like, second heat was won in 404 by Faith Kipiegon. The third one was Gudaf Sagai. What is that? 14 seconds off her personal best. <laughs> yeah, but I think like it, it, like you look at the, the some of the women behind her, like that's some of them. It's sniffing, you know, a second or two off of their PRs. Yeah, I, I think the last athletes in, you know, obviously have to run really well. But for those athletes up front today, they, they just it's you yeah. know you can you can jog and close hard and find your time. Um, so it's similar to the long jump. We don't have that much takeaway except for the fact that. Um, everyone's healthy. We got three Americans in. 
Something that, and Chris, I know you spoke to her that was really cool to see was Adele Tracy. Yeah, Adele Tracy, who a lot of people may have remembered, you know, as an 800 meter runner competing for Great Britain, but actually, like, you know, grew up and spent quite a bit of time in Jamaica. Um, and so she started this process about a year ago. Um, and then just last month, right before I think it was like the British Championships, or I mean, the Jamaican National Championships, like, it, her you know transfer of allegiance went through and so now she's competing for jamaica and you know she uh was it was very fun to for her to say like you know i want to show people that jamaicans can't just run fast they can also run far mm -hmm. and that's a um something that aisha prot lear has been pushing forward uh, a lot since 2015 when she made her own allegiance switch from uh, the united states to jamaica and so um she said that you know about a year ago, uh, Aisha Pratt and uh, Lear and her have like discussed this before, and so um, they're you know it's I can't think of two more positive you know really awesome and Aisha Pratt does a lot of stuff with the World Athletics like Athletes Commission um, to really be faces for potentially more you know Jamaican distance runners down the road and we kind of have started to see a little bit don't of don't create you know, a monster guys. the 800 like, we're all relaxed. yeah like Super we have team, enough yeah. trouble we with you enough. guys in the 100 and 200 yeah. <laughs> <Relax. laughs> <laughs> but, but, but Kyle like do you do think it would be so much fun to have like oh. Jamaican fans chirping at you for 1500 oh meter takes goodness. in your I mentions? think that would be yeah. a lot of fun yeah. I yeah. think it would be kind of fun <laughs> Guys, Kyle's start, face start is not happy right now. Over to Team Jamaica. Start developing the Jamaican fifteen hundred meter runners so that like <laughs> Kyle's Twitter. Kyle can coach together. them actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, look, that's how we get the dual meet, the U.S. Jamaica full Wait. team dual meet going. That would I think be awesome. We should make that happen. Yeah, we're in, I'll in, talk to in, in New York. Yeah, <laughs> in New York. <laughs> or in Philly. Franklin that's kind Field. of mutual yeah. territory. Like, yeah. Just yeah. go out to New York. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, other than that, I guess like fifteen hundred, no. Big, big shockers. Laura Galvin didn't make it through, unfortunately, for Mexico. And also the NCAA champion, uh, Santa Visa, uh, didn't make it through for Italy. So uh, those are it's two a people long that... long year. Yeah. yeah. For an NCAA athlete to still be competing. So that was the 1500. And then what else have we got in that later session? We have the men's, men's 100. 100. Oh, how could we not talk Frederick. about How can we not talk about the I mean, men's 100? Okay. We starting with Frederick? No, yes. no, no. We got to no, build, build up. Let's, let's, build, let's up build up Ted Let's start with Marvin. Fred. Marvin, this very openly in the, it, you know, takes the win. He said it was the easiest. 10-0. Uh, yeah. Easiest 10-0 <laughs> he's ever run in his career. Um, so he's not afraid he's to think. Next? You know, I think Maurice said it best earlier that USA Champs is really really difficult and so when the americans get to come to a world championship or olympics typically it's way easier mm -hmm. that pressure is kind of taken down a notch and so getting through those rounds is a lot easier for them yeah because who's better the eighth athlete at a u.s championship or the eighth athlete in a world championship Ooh. u.s oh, champs for sure in the hundred there, in the hundred yeah no, definitely I mean, when you look at the statistics, even if you look at, at women as well, it's kind of, you look at our finals, and that right there could be an Olympic final. Most of them are yeah. all running under 10 seconds, under 11 seconds Don't for the women. Don't get me started on that 100 hurdles. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It, it's insane, and it's remarkable, and I think it says the, the strength and depth of Team USA. Yeah. Yeah. So Marvin. Mar Marvin. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. He he chirped a little, just a little chirp at me on Twitter because I I had written the the best redemption arcs of the U.S. champs, <laughs> and you left him on I the list. I swear to you that I had written a whole thing out on him. Yeah. And then I I hit the email link, so there was I had to cut some stuff out because I wrote too much, and I was looking. I was like, all right, like somebody's got to go. You know. <laughs> and I was like, someone's got to go. And he, you know, he had the, like a very tough Olympic trials. You know, he you got injured. He in got injured. Yeah. But then he had bounced back afterwards and ran like nine eight a couple of weeks later. So in my head, I was like, that was the end of his redemption arc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just had one bad meet. It wasn't like he had bad years or seasons or anything. <laughs> but he did. He he sent me an, or an emoji of like he yeah. forgot someone. And I had written a whole thing out. And then you <laughs> apologize. And then Vernon Norwood very cowardly. 
I apologize. But, but here's the other thing too: is sort of Vernon Norwood is the reply guy number one to any of Marvin Bracey's tweets. Like, if you guys aren't this deep into track and field Twitter, like, you just need to follow Marvin Bracey and Vernon Norwood, yes. and then you'll just see a bunch of really funny interactions where. Um, Kyle apologizes to Marvin, and then <laughs> Vernon just goes like, "Kyle, there's no need to apologize. He got lucky." <laughs> it's just, it's just like no, no matter what happens, Vernon keeps Marvin on his toes, and and uh, it's just fantastic to see. So, um, but we did ask him. We we're like, because. He watched Fred. We're like, it's... and he said, "A oh, friend does this shit all the time." Like, <laughs> so Fred Curly so brushes it off. Yeah, like he just smirks and has a good time with it. Fred nine seven nine. Just once again, you don't have to so the, do that. That was so it's unnecessary, no. but he's so down. Okay, but he this is bored. so easy. Bored. But this is what Maurice was talking about earlier today. Like consistency. He's like people showing up to championships and doing stuff like this and. Fred has literally been consistently running 9-7 and mm -hmm. just opening it up on people. And so a lot of people believe that he could probably go 9-6 in the final and, yeah. and like completely obliterate the American record. He never came out point. of his drive phase. He's still in his drive phase. <laughs> he's still, <laughs> he's still phase going right now in front of the city. He was house. like, you know what? Maybe I should pop up just a little bit. <laughs> just to make sure this, I this don't picture. like lose the turn yeah, when I run. Let me not start running into someone else's lane. Let me just pop up really quick. He didn't have to do that to him. And then he doesn't stop for interviews in the mix zone. That's just very signature Fred. Although <laughs> like Gordon Mack from Flow Track did yell out to him. He was like, what's the plan for the final? Or, or what's the plan for the final or the next round? Whatever it was. He said the same thing I said last time. And so everyone's like, what did you tell you last time? <laughs> the tape. Like, he was like, world record. And then, so I guess like the plan is still we're in phase world record for Fred Early yes. right now. World uh, record number one of three. Well, when he yeah. runs nine five, we'll be like nine seven nine is kind of chilling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. you made it look easy twice. Crazy. Like he does this and he makes it look so easy. It's the first round, and I can guarantee you, these guys are not trying to go all out. They're trying to save that. It's just oh, let me just. Knows. I wonder, drive like, out. how much of it is mental games? Like in terms of, like, I mean, Maurice did say like a lot of running is mental, and sort of like you see Fred run that fast, you're like. Uh, do I have that in me? Do, like, can I go any, like, not, like for some of these guys, like that's for Marcel Jacobs, that's a PR that he has to run in order to beat Fred right now in, at his, in his first round form. And so yeah. you see, uh, you know, Trayvon Brumell run, what was it? 989. I think yeah. it was. In, yes. In, in his race. Yep. Um, with the peace sign. Yeah. Peace sign. Slow chilling. Down Literally peace jogging. Sign. Smiling, having so a great Trayvon time. So Trayvon is in a really cool, relax, in, in a very similar way, in a relaxed mindset going into to this next round. That I, I, it is sort of going to be sort of this thing where maybe Caitlin, we're going to have to do a video or something like that where you hit the streets and ask people, "Is like who you got in the final? Is it is it Fred? Is it Trayvon or someone else?" And mm. like because you, I mean, we're talking now. Our opinions may change, you know, tomorrow and the day after. It's just sort of like as who who is it going to be? And Fred is making a statement. Trayvon is just very unfazed by it. Marvin doesn't care. Marcel Jacobs tried to do like as little as he could to advance, but also like we got to remember this is his fir first race in a yes. while. It didn't yeah. look as good it as didn't look as good. Really. And this is something, and uh, we're going to keep plugging this because the conversation we had earlier today with Maurice was one of the coolest conversations yeah. I've had in a while. And, you know, he kind of said, unless he has really good training partners, it is hard to open up yeah. and, like, come out here when you've been on the bench for a little while. Yes. Yeah. So, men's 100, like, it's really the fireworks are going to be coming out for that one, I think. And, like, you know, there's this talk, even among the USA guys, about a potential sweep. Marvin, I think, like, pointed out. And, like, this is, like, we've gotten this far. We haven't even mentioned Christian Coleman. That like right. Christian Coleman. <laughs> That's how deep we are, guys. Is We're in still, it. yeah. He 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 won his heat. Also, you know, kind of flex at the end as well, where it's he's chilling too. So. Team USA looking really, really good. And this is the American bias coming out, but also we're just speaking facts. I think yeah. Yeah. Here's the one guy that I think could be the disruption to the whole thing that we're not talking about. Wait, let's and see. Who do you think it is? I, I just looked at the screen, so I, I, I can see. You who know it is. who it is? Hold on. Let me let me go who, back who, and look at these. Who do you think these? could break up the Team USA possible sweep? I. Let's see. Yep. Wow, yeah. Ah, yeah. That's Lee Sabogo, the 19-year-old from Botswana. <laughs> ran 994 nine, nine, four today. Yep. I believe it's a U20 world it record. Yes, 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 it, yes it was. 
And, you know, he had run 9.96 in Botswana earlier this year. It was a barely legal win, plus 1.9. But, like, I want to see you race people yeah. when you run fast. Like, yeah. you know, running fast one time is one thing, but, like, you got to beat people. Consistency. And today, you know. Showed up and showed up. He showed up. Uh, we do have people, obviously, watching this live on YouTube and uh, chiming in the comment section. And the Jamaican contingent, I, lo- I love our Jamaican viewers. So, <laughs> Jamaican viewers, hit the sub- smash the subscribe button because we love you guys. Yeah. But uh, hey guys. Oblique Seville is another person that I think that is being thrown out there. And, like, he had a little, like, a, a good scrum of people, like, you know, waiting to, t- to talk to him as well. So Yeah, 993. Um, yeah. Yep. Well, he's another young guy, you know. I mean, he's, he, he's the hope right now for Jamaica. Yeah. Season's best of 986, you know. He, he can get it. He might be, you know. I, I guess we were on the same page. Yeah. But I'm, I guess he, I'm surprised that you didn't say oblique. Wait, so I kind of want to just get this clip here done. Are we all out on Marcel Jacobs possibly winning? Yes. Thing? Are we all out on Marcel Jacobs meddling? Yeah. I, don't I don't think, think Degras or Jacobs medal. I don't Me think either. neither one of them medal. I agree either. with you guys too. It's All either right. going to be a U.S. sweep, or let's say he's going to come in and break it up, or the Jamaica's going to come in and break it up. I call U.S. So sweep. at least two U.S. medals is what you're thinking. I call yes, three. at least two. Jasmine's calling three. They race each other all the time. <laughs> they they literally race each other we don't all have the time. time to talk yeah. between the semis so, and the finals. Yeah. It's like two hours, so that'd yeah. be an emergency podcast. Emergency podcast. Emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone back to the <laughs> house. Come on, let's yeah. go. <laughs> uh, how many medals do you say? Um, I think we definitely go one, two. And the question is, do we go one, two, four, or one, two, three? I... I think I'll join Jasmine on this one. I'm going to go you, with the sweep. But I'm not what convinced is, it's definitely Fred. I just want to say that. I don't... Yeah, I'm not totally convinced it's Fred either. Is that... Am I partially biased? Because we once did it uh, after the final lap with Trayvon. And <laughs> For I, like, two and a half hours. Trayvon. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that there's any possibility of us getting top four? Oh, one, two, three, four. Ooh. Like, it, do you, Ooh. is there a slither? Yeah, you know, there's, that I think there's, there is there a chance. Is. It's higher than you think. It's not on the gra- bottom level. Yeah, I think. Not, that's not a far fetched thing to happen with Team USA. It's not far fetched. No. Has that ever happened with any team? Well, before? so here's the thing. Like, if they do go one, two, three, four, then there's no excuse for. The relay. For the relay. No, okay, no, but there is an excuse. Relay. We just there don't is. run it. We go. We do. Nah. <laughs> like we do what we need it, to do. Fine. We proved ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we proved ourselves. <laughs> but we all know relays are not just speed. What is that stick gonna do when it gets around the track? But completely yeah. different conversation. Um, should you want to tell everyone about the Ferdinand story? You didn't. Re- we didn't even really fully dive in. Okay, so Ferdinand Omanyala, the African champion, Kenyan national record holder. He's actually one of two guys this year who has beat. Fred Curley, because uh, he did it at the Kipkano Classic out in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, so he's a strong contender. He's up. He's he's tied for I think the second or third fastest time in the world this year. Um, but two days ago, we just started to see all these tweets pouring out about how he's still in Kenya and he's having yes. trouble coming to America because you know he's not the only one. There's there have been a slew of athletes a who've lot had a lot of visa of issues. visa issues. Um, which hopefully, like you know, maybe if if we do get the chance to host another major event like this down the road, that it's something that could be, you know, a, b- a bit better. But okay, so then Omanyala is in Kenya yesterday, uh, which is kind of crazy to think Insane. about. You see a tweet of him finally this morning uh, saying that he's got his visa approved or late last night, and he's got him. He's going to get to the United States about two and a half to three hours before his race. And we talked, you know, again, you guys have to go back and watch this Maurice Green interview that we did earlier because he does say, like, coming off the plane, I wouldn't bet on him or I would bet. And most likely I would bet against him. Uh, So (laughs) Omanyala, you got he runs, makes it through to the to the semifinal. You got I said I saw him in the mix zone and I said to him, you made it. He goes, yeah. I made it. And he was all smiles. He was also talking to every single reporter for, for so long. Minutes. There's no one sleepier in the building than him. And it's an important story to tell. And so, okay, you sat through and, and, and listened to him. Yeah, he his came interview. straight from the airport. He hasn't he hadn't checked into his room straight or Straight from the airport to the right track. Now? I hope Absolutely he's asleep. Absolutely he's asleep. He is knocked out right now. You think he I ate? No. 
You don't think so? How brutal would it be if they're like, uh, you've been randomly selected for director? Oh, oh my gosh. God. Yeah. Oh my so goodness. Funny. So, so like, what, no. el- what else did he say? I mean, honestly, he was downplaying it so much. He, he, it was, it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal. I asked him, I was like, you've beaten Fred Curley before. They, they raced earlier this year in Nairobi. It's like, can you beat him? And he said, yeah, I think I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, so it's not like he's even changing the goals or the plans Mentality. or anything. Mentality. And, you know, I think he's a he's a young dude. He's only been – it's funny. Like, he's now a medal contender, right? Like, mm-hmm. when you run as fast as he has, then you're now a medal contender. Two years ago, if you go back and you look at his personal best, I mean, he's a, a former rugby player turned runner, and he just said, like, the pandemic That's was... That's so opposite. Yeah. yeah. So he said the pandemic, <laughs> he was able to get, like, amazing training. He started focusing on it. I asked him, he said he really misses rugby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but he, he's all in on running. He's, like, a, a really young talent. And, you know, maybe kids just don't need to sleep. Can I so just th- say that sometimes when traveling, I have the best practices. I've had the best practices as soon as I'm off the plane. Really? Okay. But Michael Johnson's tweet, did you see that? He said it's day two. Day two. No. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's day two. It's always those days after. So we'll see how he's looking. So the video interview with Fernandad Omanyala is up on our YouTube channel. Kyle. We got all these interviews pumping so on our YouTube channel. You got to make sure you're subscribed to this. Go and watch all of our videos once this podcast is done. Um, really quick, kind of, like you, you you mentioned how he's downplaying it. Can you two take me sort of into the athlete mindset here a little bit of like, you have all these reporters and people asking you, it was like, I can't believe you're here. And also it's like, isn't it so crazy that you just got off the plane? Like, do you have to kind of trick yourself a little bit to maybe think it was like, uh, actually, this is not, not that crazy. Not that crazy. Yeah. I, and that's, he successfully did that. Yeah. It's just something that's out of your control at this point. Like you are here, you're here to compete. You made it. Why harp on it? I, I'm, and that's almost the surprising thing. And it seemed like he had almost reached nirvana in the situation. Like he was talking <laughs> about it, like it was like an outer body experience. Like it honestly, it wasn't even affecting him that much. But it's like you're here now. Like what? No, that's you can choose for that to be your excuse 100%. if you fail to do what you're here to do, or you can just kind of own it, say it happened, move on, and just work with what you got. Absolutely. The best thing you can do is just focus on the things that you can control. And that was something he couldn't necessarily control. And so you just have to play that role with it. And hey, I got to take advantage of what I can control right now. That mentality that he has is what's going to work in his favor. Chris, can you check the schedule? Is there a a medal ceremony for the guy who's the sleepiest and just got off the plane most recently? (laughs) Um, (laughs) If there is, then... That's day 11. That's day 11. (laughs) And it's Fernandino Mignola versus me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move to the uh, first medals, right? Well, you know, let's just quickly. There's a few other things that we okay. just didn't hit. Javon Harrison um, jumped two two eight, made it through to the wow. final in the high two, jump, eight. as did Shelby McEwen, both two two eight. That's what it took today to make it through in the high jump. Yeah. And then in the men's hammer throw, uh, I believe we got all three men through. Nice. Yes. So, um, all right, now we can go on. All right. Mixed 4x4, four four, or as any promo commercial teaser you've seen for this one, this one was billed as Allison Felix's final lap. Uh, last time she's going to ever race on the track at a professional level. It's sort of like I, you have to add some of these qualifiers in there because it's like, oh, she could always just like hop into, uh, I don't know, like a fun run race or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, so the, the, the eyes are going to be on the second leg of, of Team USA. It, co- it goes off. Who, le- who let us off? It was... It was Elijah Godwin. Elijah Godwin. I guess, Caitlin, can you replay the race or one of you two just sort of in for, for us? Yep. I'm trying to remember. So it was Elijah Godwin uh, from Georgia first, and then it was handed off to the one and only Allison Felix. Was it in the lead? He had handed off in the he lead? Did he did hand it off in the lead. His split was a 44-71. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then when Allison got the baton around the track, her split was a 50.15. Mm-hmm. And then uh, from Allison, we handed off to Vernon Norwood, who split a 44-7, I think. 44-40. 44-40. And then we handed off to the fresh Kennedy Simon of Texas, who split her second 50 of the day with a 50.9. Yeah. 
And, okay, so we just recapped Team USA. Didn't win. That's ended up, ended up it, like, the, obviously because of Allison, this race is going to make a lot of headlines, but you got to give major props to the Dominican Republic and especially yeah. Marlady Polino being on the second leg. What, did, what was Marlady's split? 48-47. Yeah. Cooking. Getting and scary for that open four. That's can, the difference maker in this race. You guys, uh, can I just read off all of their yeah, splits? Yeah, read off all of Dominican Republic. Because all of them ran in the 40s. So first leg, Lidio Andreas Feliz ran 46-31. Mm -hmm. Our Lady Polina. Thank you. 48-47. Mm -hmm. Alexander, I don't want to butcher your last name, Agondo. Okay. 45-12. How do you say this other name? I don't want to butcher your guys' name. I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm sorry. Fiorda Lisa Cofiel. Thank Cofiel. you. 4992. Like Fiorda Lisa. There we go. Cofiel. There we go. Thank Good you. For Nando, you should have hopped on. in this. You should have said the names and I just write, read the numbers. There you go. But all of them running in the 40s, phenomenal race also. They like, were definitely fighting that entire time, like watching that race too. Um, but also major props to Kennedy Simon because I feel like there was a lot of pressure on her mm. being a like she, I think she was second leg earlier today, and they moved her to anchor, which you know most people would assume that Allison was gonna run. So it was literally all eyes on her. It's like Allison has just made this race for you, and like you have to bring it home. And so I think the fact that she ran two fifty points today after having a long collegiate season um, just really showed like the kind of fight that she was having because she was really trying to bring it to the line. Her first ever global championship medal. Yeah. I mean, she she was running in college all year, and so uh, really special moment for her but you know i've seen it already in some of the comment section here tweets uh, like people are being very hard on kennedy They're simon being so hard on her and, and and it really really sucks because it's like i mean me being an nc athlete myself like i've seen this girl run all season and then since i'm friends with serenity and her and serenity are literally like best friends it's like i'm hearing about her story like all the time and i'm like, yes, I understand we wanted Allison Felix to go out with the gold medal, but, like, she's also got a gazillion of them, and she still ran a 50 point today, which is something to celebrate and also something to celebrate with Kennedy. So I really hate the fact that you guys are getting on her because she's she's so young. She's fresh. It's her first time. So she's young, and sorry. Sorry, Kyle. But, like, guys. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to jump Kyle, on shut her. Up. I was not going to no, jump no, no, on her. No, 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 <laughs> I just want you guys to, like, truly understand mm -hmm. she's had such a long season. She starts her training early. That also adds on. She's had an indoor season, an outdoor season. She goes to USA's. She makes it on to be a, on the 4x4 mixed relay. And then she comes and runs two 400s in one day. Mm -hmm. So I have some complicated feelings with this. No, this, and this is fair because like I kind of the way I wanted to outline this is sort of like going forward, like this is not a knock on Kennedy Simon, but like Team USA in general, for sure. I mean, Kennedy Simon was seventh in the 400 mm -hmm. at uh, USA's. They've got plenty of toys oh, basically for am ammunition yeah. to really stack this relay. And I think Can I Bianca, in? Yeah. I think yes, Bianca talked you. about this on Twitter. She was like, this is not to knock anybody who ran today because they all ran their asses off. But if you got to run the relay like you want to win it, and she personally believed that that was not – like USA did not run a team to try to get gold. Like they ran a team to run a team. So I have complicated feelings with the mix 4x4 four four because – and I'm vocal about it. I think it's a stupid event. Um, Agreed. <laughs> I, I don't think we needed it. I think Retweet. the four by eight and the DMR would have been a much more appropriate thing. If anything, DMR. we need less events in track and field, not more. But Retweet. it is an event, and it's here, and people take it seriously, except the U.S. Yes. And I don't know why we're throwing away what should be a lock of a gold medal. Like, we have crazy depth in this event, and it's day one, and they're... Are, and the athletes, and I think initially, like a lot of people, it's like, oh, like, you know, how did we not win this? But you look at the athletes, they actually ran great. Like the yeah. team that we put really out really to well. run 310 ran, ran, well. ran well. So this is not a knock on them because yeah. they all individually ran strong. But I do just think about our bench and how many athletes we have that maybe if we would have just input one of the stars. And, you know, look, like I get it as an individual like your primary event for example like a thing like mm -hmm. her primary events the 800 like she's the olympic 800 meter champion but like if you put it her in this race do we win gold then it just feels like maybe and that's not 
uh, that shouldn't be put on a thing, you know, but there is probably six athletes that we had on the sideline that if maybe we swap any one of them, and I'm, I guess I'm a little surprised that none of the one athletes that could have been swapped was like, yeah, I'll take a gold medal. Well, the other thing too here is like, to go back to your point of like, other countries taking this a little bit seriously. Marlady Polino has the 400 to focus. Femke Bowl, yeah. Femke yes. Bowl yes. was subbed in to, for the final. Yes, because uh, you know she wanted another medal. She got a yeah. silver out yeah. of this, and she's got to come back and be in top form to uh, contend against Sydney McLaughlin and Dalila Muhammad. And like this is th- now she's on you know to a degree tired legs. My yeah. thing is is like people, but see, I don't even. I feel like at this level can't use tired as an, as an excuse because you train to literally do stuff like this yeah. and then also when you look at people like Britton wilson from the ncaa like literally pulling off what she did at secs it's like if she can run 50 points and have prs and run 48s in literally less than two hours i don't understand why you can't do all of these 400s with like days spread mm-hmm. apart yeah no i definitely agree with that i think looking at the schedule there's there's some time to recover, and honestly, let, let's keep it real. The mix 4x4, four four, it's not like they have to run something super spectacular on their splits. To them, that's probably more of a, hey, I got out here, I did it, let's keep it going. And even some of those 200 girls that run the 400 could have been placed on there. You know, who, who what I did notice sort of in the mix zone is like, while well, Team USA, like, you could kind of visibly see it a little bit. And Jasmine, you were with me, like, in the interview, it, like, watching some of the interviews that, like, they themselves are also very disappointed yeah. with with bronze. So it's not just you know the fans who are out there and you know the, you know the people who are just like man it would have been nice for Allison to go off with a with a gold. It's sort of like no Kennedy Simon's upset that it's not gold either, and you know Elijah Godwin's also excited, like disappointed that it's not gold. So like it it's I, it does come down to the, I watched Team Jamaica come through in the mix zone visibly. Dis- upset. Like uh, upset, oh they did not want to do any of like the interviews with the own Jamaican media because, like, they wanted a gold medal and sort of like that's sort of the thinking that I think Team USA has to have, where it's sort of even they, I think maybe could benefit from you know adding a star or two and onto those relays. I think the problem boils down to the fact that at the end of the championships, the U.S. will have the most medals and the mm-hmm. most gold medals, no matter what. And so like we're not really fighting for that position, like oh well we've got to get this one. Yeah. Right. Because, like, if we want to come out with, like, the most gold medals, and it's like, no, this isn't the make or break, and so I feel like we let it go a little bit. But also, there's prize money on the <laughs> right. line. Yes. And also, like, like, why do something if you're not going to try to be the best at it? Like, whether you know you're – just why? Just just go out there to be the best. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, that's why, like, to your point – a DMR mix it up because that's not a guaranteed U.S. gold medal. Like that's a Kenya one possibly, or mm-hmm. you know yeah. some of these other countries, Spain or, or anything like that could be you know really strong contenders. We're far so, from a guaranteed gold medal in this, as we've learned. But so, yeah. look, like, are there a couple combinations that maybe we could have got it today? Yeah, I like to think yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> and again, not a knock on any individuals because they actually all ran great. And you see the splits maybe. and you see the final time and. They, the the people we put on the track ran well. Is so, it required to run a mixed four by four? Like, I will be qualified for it, and I think like well now our medalist I think like it guarantees the next year's or something like that. I think they're they're working on world relays is going to be the qualifier for um, future Olympics. I think that's how that's going to work. But so this isn't going away anytime soon. So. We got to get our act together, I think. In the, well, at yeah, least add the DMR if you're not going to get rid of it. Yeah. My, well, my thing is, is if for Team USA, not for because other countries obviously are taking this mix four by four serious, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like if Team USA feels like it's a compromise from these individuals and prospering in their events yeah. and the four by four, why are we entering in it? Well, it's also sort of like in last year with the. F- for uh the four by four at the Olympics, like there were probably some people who ran the open four who were a little disappointed that it, they weren't part of that relay. Yeah. Uh, and instead they added someone like Dalila and a thing to the to the you know the relay in the in the final. That do, do you think it changes things if we move this the the mix four by four to also the last final day like in the schedule so that if those big stars we can throw them into the four by four but also have some of these players that are that contested the four hundred. I don't think other countries are going to have that depth to be able to. That's yeah. the challenge. That's just there. the U.S. Yeah. So, but like, yeah. So it's 
we got to fix the mixed four by four if it's going to stick around. There's probably a lot of conversations we yeah. don't have insight to that were yeah. happening behind the scenes, but overall. Because we love track and field so much, and because we're patriots, we're disappointed with the bronze, and that really speaks to the character of because yeah. we America. Because really <laughs> we really love track yeah. and field. <laughs> All right. So last thing, Allison Felix did hundreds of interviews in the mix zone today. She finally did get around to to us. Kind of did ask, sort of like, so this is this is it, right? Like you're done. And she was like, yeah. And uh, come back on the four before. <laughs> 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 so I said, I said. Uh, you know, what is, because this is the big question, like, you have a star like that, you don't want them to just immediately go away, like, you never see them again, right? So, it's like, what are you going to do to kind of remain close to the sport? And so, uh, she's kind of already laid the foundation for some of the post, uh, you know, professional track and field career. She wants to continue to be a major advocate for um, mother athletes, and that's not not just in track and field, and continue to push for, for child care, and so um, in some way, shape, or form, Allison Felix is still going to have that footprint on the sport, and so, you know, it was really nice, it was really nice to hear that, like, you know, she's still going to be out there for, uh, you know, probably rooting for Team USA, and hopefully, you know, lifting up some of these other uh, future stars. Do we have room for her in the budget to come on as a Sidious Mag analyst? Uh, no, because we spent all the money to get Caitlin a Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, also, right, this I'll is quit. Gonna... I quit. Yeah. <laughs> for the I sport, this... oh, everything is great for the it's sport. All for the sport. This is gonna kill me just because we didn't mention it. Because I I'd said that the men got all three in before we end. I want to mention that all three women got in the hammer as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. So you know. we, lost, you. We, we lost Deanna Price who had had COVID, mm -hmm. and she lost twelve pounds right like in the last oh week or two with, with yeah. COVID, and so she was a scratch, the defending champ. But we still have three Team USA members in the final. So Kyle, really quick, pull up the schedule for tomorrow, so so we can let the listeners know like what finals we have tomorrow on tap. But first, tomorrow, five thirty p.m. Eastern time. Sidious Mag live from Worlds on YouTube. Our guests for tomorrow are slated to be Vin Lanana, one of the guys who was very instrumental in getting the World Championships here um, to the United States, and also Olympic silver medalist in the shot put, Raven Saunders. So then, you know that's when that one's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then you know you know we might have some other guests pop up and surprise us like today. Bryce Hopple didn't tell us he was going to come by to, to the house, you know, for, for until like maybe 30 minutes before we started the show. And so we're going <laughs> to be that very us. fluid in, ter <laughs> in terms of just like anyone's welcome to, you know, be a guest on the City of Smack uh, Don't say that. live that competed. Not not a, not just anybody. I still wouldn't be. Or in a the, person. Walk but you know, it's it's, it's exciting. We I had, have a medal. I had, yeah. <laughs> I had uh, Joe a world record. Joe Kovacs was like, I see what you guys are doing at City's Mag House. You guys are throwing beanbags at like my face because he <laughs> sees that we have a cornhole set back there, and he's like, so I'll be out. I'll be there on Monday. I'll bring the medal, and also, uh, you better well, like let's do some steaks. And so, uh, we're gonna have some, a big throws day on Monday, but. That's what we, we have a show to look forward to tomorrow. Vin Lanana, Raven Saunders, and a couple more guests. Hopefully. Finals, men's hammer, women's 10,000, men's long jump, women's shot put, and the men's 100. Stadium's going to be packed. Woo! Woo! I'm All right. excited. Before we close it out. Oh, my. Here he goes again. <laughs> Hayward Magic is a presenting sponsor of this show. So they're pushing the sport forward, sharing the stories of like the athletes that make this such a great sport. You've got... They've got some really cool content that's coming out of the mix zone as well throughout the next 10 days. So be sure to follow Hayward Magic on Instagram. Hayward Magic moment of the day. What was your favorite moment of the day? We'll go around. Oh. Kyle, do you want to start us off? I have to start us off. Hayward Magic All right, moment. I'll start. start us out. I will start us off. My Hayward Magic moment of the day was seeing Fernandetto Mignola in the stadium because it took a little bit of magic for him to get to to – the United States in the first place. And the fact that he pulled it off and not only that, uh, managed to get through the first round of the 100 after all of that extra stress that was added within the last 48 hours, my Hayward Magic moment of the day is for any of that Omanyala. I'm going to take Marlady Polina. 48, what was it? 48-4? Crazy. That is Something magic. Something fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, for me, I got to go with uh, Stephan McCarter because this is your second track meet of the year and here you are. Wow. <laughs> I'll go with Jim Kibble. Okay. I think she did. She also. I think she also split a uh, forty-eight today as well, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so that I'll go with that. Did you know we learned this in the mix zone? We were just kind of looking up random facts. Netherlands, tallest. Uh, tallest because we saw how tall their whole team was oh my god i got so happy because i was like well now i don't feel weird it's like the only tall like (laughs) meaty 400 person so okay (laughs) all right (laughs) all right let us know your hayward magic moment of the day in the comment section you can tweet at us at sidious mag be sure to follow uh, our, us on Twitter, Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll see you guys back live here again, 5.30 p.m., City of Smack Live from Worlds. I love track and field. It's okay. I, I guess I love Retweet. It. It sucks. Retweet Chris. <laughs> That's blasphemy. Not Kyle. Retweet Chris. Allison would never say that. Allison would never say that. Play the music back. <laughs> Good night, everybody.